Hello everybody, and welcome back to Martyrs and Miracles, stories about the saints and holy figures of our time shared in a more honest way. Today we're going to talk about Edith Stein. I'm going to tell you a little bit of her story, and then I'm going to share some suggestions with you at the end on resources that you can look up for yourself. Edith Stein wasn't simply a Jewish woman who converted and became a Catholic Carmelite nun. She was German and Jewish and atheist and a scholar and a professor who taught Latin and philosophy. And she held a doctoral degree in philosophy who focused her thesis on empathy, earned summa cum laude honors, and was categorized as a realistic phenomenologist. She was also a Red Cross nurse during World War I and an author. She translated Thomas Aquinas's De Veritate into German, and after her conversion, said she wanted to be a voice for the children of Israel within the church by exclaiming, I will be like Jesus, who never stopped being a Jew. Additionally, she continued celebrating Jewish culture and important holidays with her very observant family. That paints a very different picture than the mission of conversion that many of her hagiographies tried to convey. Edith can be considered a highly controversial saint because of her Jewish heritage, practice, and culture, and then subsequent conversion to a Catholic Carmelite nun that the church claimed as their martyr and canonized as one of six co-patron saints of Europe. According to an article on womeninTheology.org, the decision to canonize Stein was met with much condemnation and protest from various Jewish voices, of course, who felt that this was just yet another display of Christian imperial authority claiming a Jewish figure as one of its own faithful subjects, while also failing to adequately address the church's complicity in anti-Semitism. The Catholic Church is known to have been largely silent during the early abuse of the Nazi regime and resulting Holocaust, too. While this take could be considered generational according to modern Jewish people, I think it is still important to recognize. Edith even wrote a letter to Pope Pius XI criticizing the Nazis, imploring him to put a stop to this abuse of Christ's name by asking the Pope to openly denounce the Nazis. The Pope never responded to her letter that read, As a child of the Jewish people who, by the grace of God for the past 11 years, has also been a child of the Catholic Church, I dare to speak to the father of Christianity about that which oppresses millions of Germans. For weeks we have seen deeds perpetuated in Germany which mock any sense of justice and humanity, not to mention love of neighbor. For years the leaders of National Socialism have been preaching hatred of the Jews, but the responsibility must fall, after all, on those who brought them to this point, and it also falls on those who keep silent in the face of such happenings. Everything that happened and continues to happen on a daily basis originates with a government that calls itself Christian. For weeks, not only Jews, but also thousands of faithful Catholics in Germany and, I believe, all over the world, have been waiting and hoping for the Church of Christ to raise its voice, to put a stop to this abuse of Christ's name. Is not this idolization of race and governmental power, which is being pounded into the public consciousness by the radio open heresy? Isn't the effort to destroy Jewish blood and abuse of the holiest humanity of our Savior, of the most blessed Virgin and the Apostles? Is not all this diametrically opposed to the conduct of our Lord and Savior, who, even on the cross, still prayed for his persecutors? And isn't this a black mark on the record of this holy year, which was intended to be a year of peace and reconciliation? We all, who are faithful children of the church and who see the conditions in Germany with open eyes, fear the worst for the prestige of the church if the silence continues any longer. Edith was born on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, the holiest day of the Hebrew calendar, as the youngest of 11 children. Early on, her mother identified her as an incredibly gifted child, encouraging critical thinking and intense study as she grew. Her father died when she was young, which left her mother as the sole source of influence and stability. 
Edith enjoyed learning and admired her family's strong Jewish faith until she started studying religious history in her teenage years and then considered herself an atheist for quite some time. I actually admire that about her evolution story. As a young woman, she began to combine her intellect with intuition and realized she had a different calling. She taught at the University of Freiburg after completing her doctoral thesis, but was forced to quit her teaching position in 1933 as the Nazi regime required of all civil servants who weren't Aryan. After her exit from the university, a friend handed her an autobiography of St. Teresa of Avila. Her call emerged loud and clear, and she began the process of shifting to the Christian faith. St. Teresa was a Spanish Carmelite nun, which piqued Edith's desire further, and she pressed to learn more about convent life and answering her call to God as a fellow Carmelite nun, all of which was just too much for her observant Jewish mother to bear. Edith moved to the Carmelite monastery in Cologne, where she became a postulant, donning a religious habit and a religious name. She became a lecturer and teacher within the Catholic institution, teaching Latin and philosophy. Her sister Rosa also converted to Christianity and came to the monastery to live with her. In 1938, Edith and her sister were both sent to the monastery in Echt, Netherlands, for safety from the Nazis because of their Jewish heritage. Prior to the Nazi occupation of the Netherlands, Edith knew she would not survive the war. She created a will and offered herself as a sacrifice of atonement for true peace to the heart of Jesus. Considering she was born on the Day of Atonement, this was quite a way to sacrifice herself. She quietly trained for life in a concentration camp by enduring extreme cold and complete hunger. It is even said that a Dutch official offered Edith an escape plan after witnessing her sense of faith and calm, and she vehemently refused. She said, If somebody intervened at this point and took away the chance to share the fate of my brothers and sisters, that would be utter annihilation. All baptized Catholics of Jewish origin in the Netherlands were arrested by the Gestapo on August 2, 1942. 244 people in total, according to historic records. They were sent to Auschwitz concentration camp where they were murdered by gas chamber just days later. Edith Stein is also known by the church as St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross. She was born October 12, 1891 in Poland and died on or around August 9, 1942 in the gas chambers of Auschwitz. She was canonized by Pope John Paul II on October 11, 1998 in Rome. Edith said, I will intercede on behalf of the children of Israel. I am not abandoning my faith. I am just maturing my love for God. Edith made up for what the Catholic Church lacked by being present with her Jewish brothers and sisters in the midst of war. She stood by them and with them, ultimately dying with them too. While the church stayed as silent as the male apostles when Jesus was crucified, Edith was at ground zero like Mary Magdalene, refusing to leave and becoming an ultimate witness. She is buried on the grounds of Auschwitz concentration camp in an unmarked mass grave with her fellow children of Israel. It's an uncomfortable story. I don't like talking about Auschwitz and Nazis and World War II. But it's an important story to share, and I didn't know anything about Edith Stein before I started studying her for her icon, but I'm glad that I did. I'm glad I got to know her. Her story is just incredible, and I found that there's this movie that I have to recommend. It was hard to find, but now it's a little bit more available, and it has two names. The first name it's given is called A Rose in Winter, but it's also known as The Rose of Auschwitz. So it's the same movie, but two different names. I really can't recommend the movie strongly enough. It's so good. It tells such a vivid picture of the life of Edith Stein. You can find it on Vimeo, and you can also now find it on YouTube. I'll put the links below in the description so you can find it easier. There's a book that I also recommend. It's Edith Stein's Essays. It's called Edith Stein Essays on Women, the Collected Works of Edith Stein. Um, because as you remember from her description, she was an author. She was extremely intelligent, and this is a great read. 
it's a little bit of a philosophical read in some ways, but it's worth it if you really want to get to know her. Edith said, those who remain silent are responsible. My friends, remember that when we ask for courage, God gives us an opportunity to be courageous. When we ask for truth, God gives us an opportunity to be truthful. When we ask for guidance, God gives us the opportunity to be guided. Edith prayed for the courage to stand alongside her fellow children of Israel and was given the opportunity to be courageous for her brothers and sisters in a most horrific time. I know in my heart that because of her ministry of presence, she provided comfort to those who need it the most. Our trials and tribulations are not for nothing, dear ones. Our stories help others heal. They make us who we are. They are written on our very skin. May you have the courage of Edith to stand up to the silent popes of the world and to be a ministry of presence to those in the darkest of places and situations. Not just for others, but for yourself too. Have a blessed day, and please carry Edith's story with you in your heart. I wanted to give a shout out and a thank you to Max Duvall for our original music and to all of my patrons on Patreon. If you'd like to contribute to this podcast and everything else that we do in this ministry, please go to patreon.com slash Kristen Wheeler artist. The link will be in the description and we can't do this without you.